Well, work has formally begun on assembling the world's largest nuclear fusion reactor in the south of France. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER, project includes the EU, the US and Russia, amongst others. Fusion is the system of nuclear reaction where atoms are combined to produce vast amounts of energy with no radioactive waste byproduct. The aim of the ITER project is to maintain and control fusion over long periods of time and to refine the technology for its eventual widespread use. Our reporter Guillaume Petit is at the Kadarache Research Centre where this reactor is being built and he sent us this report. If the project succeeds, this would be the most powerful fusion machine ever made on the planet and it brings together more than 30 countries, the 27 countries from the European Union, but also China, India, Japan, South Korea, Russia and the United States. The project aims to reproduce the hydrogen fusion reactions that occur at the heart of the sun and the result would be a new source of energy with no carbon emissions. Physicians I spoke with also said there would not be high-level waste, which would be an advantage compared to the nuclear plants we use, but it's still an experimentation and the project won't provide energy until at least 20 years. Environmental associations also underlined the cost, at least 20 billion euros for a project that has taken longer than expected and which would not be a quick response, according to them, to the urgent need to fight global warming. Near Aix-en-Provence, Guillaume Petit for Euronews. We're joined now from Barcelona by Johannes Schwemmer from Fusion for Energy, the organization in charge of the EU's input to ITER. Hello there, Jim. Many thanks so much for joining us on Euronews Now. Now, can you explain to us, clearly in simple terms, how this ITER project works, how this energy is created and what makes it so unique? Good afternoon. Yes, uh, that is relatively simple if you look up at the sky and it, see what the sun is doing. Yeah, Fusing hydrogen kernels to helium, that's the basic uh, approach of fusion, which we are trying to replicate in a slightly modified way to make it easier to do using lithium. And this is what we try to do here in Kadarash, which you see there, uh, where we try to get this going for the first time, producing more thermal energy that we put in. And if we manage to do this, this will be a major milestone to getting us closer to producing e electricity this way. Uh, you said if we manage to do this. So if I understand correctly, uh, th th it's still uncertain whether this project will work, will, if those energy needs will be ultimately met. It's, well, it works in the sun. So the question is, do we get it right this time? And we're obviously very, very confident because uh, humanity has done research on this since, since sort of the late 1950s and we got better and better all the time. So it's about time we cross this barrier of producing more energy than we need to heat it and to keep it together. So indeed, we're very confident, but it, there is a bit of a thrill in it because it's still research. Eh? It's not a given that it works easily. And that's why we spend so much effort and money on it. But I think for mankind, I think it's well worth the try. Yeah? You see, it works in the sun, so it's an obvious thing to, to pursue. If it's an obvious thing to pursue, and it's also described in, by some scientists as a game changer because the uh, energy that we produced will be clean, uh, could this change the way we use energy if this project does actually come to pass? Uh, yes, I mean, in the beginning, it's going to be expensive, then it's going to get cheaper and cheaper as the fuel is abundant. So it, it, in one moment in time, maybe we, energy becomes as easy to use as what we do now, communications. Yeah, There is no more limit. It produces no carbon. You don't need oil. It just works. And that is the vision where we should get with energy. And I must say that I think that uh, fusion is a very good complement with renewables, because renewables are cheap when the sun shines and the wind blows, and when they're not there, you need something. And at the moment, this something is oil, and to re re replace it with something clean as well would be a wonderful thing. It does sound like an absolutely wonderful thing, but it will take some time in coming. Uh, our reporter, Guillaume Petit, was saying uh, no energy uh, for 20 years. Uh, why so long? Yeah, because it's it's simply difficult. What we try to do with ITER is to show that we can produce more energy than we put in. 
And then we need one more generation that runs continuously because it is just a research machine. It doesn't run longer than five minutes. And then we'll be there to produce energy. So if you look at it from now to then, it looks long. If you think how long when the old Greek were dreaming of the sun and flying and so on, how long did the flying take? It took 2,000 years. Uh, so the power of the sun maybe takes 2,050. Should be still fine. It's all relative. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. Absolutely <laughs> fascinating. Uh, Johannes Schimmer there.